Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to learn about the deep fascia of the thigh. If you haven't watched our video on the superficial fascia of the thigh and also introduction to the lower limb, please make sure to watch them. And if you are new here, make sure to subscribe and watch our anatomy videos. So today we are going to learn about deep fascia of the thigh. So actually the deep fascia of the thigh is very strong and it envelops like a sleeve on the thigh. So this is also called as the fascia lata. It is very common name for this fascia. It is called as the fascia lata because it encloses wide area on the thigh. Like a sleeve, it encloses wide area on the thigh. That's why it is called as a fascia lata. And what are the attachments of the fascia lata? We have superior attachment as well as the inferior attachment. So what do we have in the superior? Superiorly, it is attached to the ASIS. That is the anterior superior iliac spine of the hip. And also it is attached to the inguinal ligament then it is attached to the pubic tubercle as well so superiorly the fascia lata is attached to the anterior superior spine inguinal ligament and the pubic tubercle and what about inferior aspect inferiorly it is attached to the subcutaneous bony prominences of the capsule of knee joint capsule of knee joint where it is attached inferiorly so these are about the attachments of the facial lata that is the deep face of the leg superiorly and inferiorly so we are also going to learn about the modifications of deep fascia so what about the modifications this facial lata is modified into two aspects they are the iliotibial tract iliotibial tract and also we have the saphenous opening saphenous opening so what are the modifications of the fascia lata? We have the iliotibial tract as well as the saphenous opening. So now we will go to, into detail about the iliotibial tract. So what about the iliotibial tract? Where the fascia lata is thickened on the lateral aspect of the thigh uh, to form 2 inches wide. On the lateral aspect, it forms 2 inches wide. And this wide band is called as the iliotibial tract. On the lateral side of the thigh, the fascia lata will form 2 inch thickness and this forms the iliotibial tract. And superiorly along the iliac crest, this tract will split into two, two muscles. This so superiorly, this tract will split into two surfaces, uh, into two layers to enclose two muscles. And what are those two muscles? One we have the tensor fascia lata and another one gluteus maxius gluteus maximus and another one we have the tensor fascia lata so superiorly it is split into two splits and it encloses two muscles they are the gluteus maximus and the tensor fascia lata and therefore it will form a thickened sheet that is called as the gluteus aponeurosus gluteus aponeurosus this entire thing will form the gluteus aponeurosus and in between the gluteus aponeurosus we also find a muscle that is called as the gluteus medius gluteus medius so just revising iliotibial tract on the, the fascia lata on the lateral aspect of the thigh it is two inch wide that is called as the iliotibial tract this will split into two layers and between those two layers encloses two muscles they are the gluteus maximus and the tensor fascia lata and after forming this it forms a aponeurosis that is called as the gluteus aponeurosis and this encloses a muscle that is known as the gluteus medius so the upper part of the iliotibial tract it provides insertion to the two muscles what are those two muscles the gluteus maximus and the tensor fascia lata so what about significance of the iliotibial tract this iliotibial tract will stabilize the knee both in the extension and the partial flexion so what are the clinical significance of the iliotibial tract it stabilizes the knee stabilizes the knee when when does it stabilize it stabilizes in both the extension and also partial flexion of the knee joint as well and also it is also a main support for the knee at against the gravity when you are trying to bend the knee it is also a main support so now we are going to learn about the saphenous opening which is a modification of the fascia lata so stick to the video till the end and please make sure to subscribe. So now looking into the saphenous opening, which is also a modification of the deep fascia of the thigh, that is the tensor fascia lata. So what about the saphenous opening? This is an oval opening like this. This is an oval opening in the fascia lata in the upper medial part of the thigh. So when you have the thigh here. This is the anterior superior iliac spine, this is the pubic tubercle, 
this is the inguinal ligament on the upper medial part of the front of the thigh so on the upper medial part of the thigh at the center of the opening this is almost about 4 cm and it is lateral to the pubic tubercle almost 3 to 4 cm below this is an oval opening so uh, situated towards the upper medial part of the thigh that is known as the uh, saphenous opening so it is formed by the superficial stratum of the fascia as well as the deep stratum so what do we have we have the superficial stratum of the fascia like this and then we have the deep fascia of the deep stratum of the fascia lata and it is covered by a layer that is known as the cribriform fascia so basically this is the superficial stratum superficial stratum of the fascia lata this was the deep stratum deep stratum of the fascia lata and above it is covered by the fascia that is called as the cribriform fascia cribriform Fascia. So why is it called a cribriform fascia? The saphenous opening is closed by a membrane of areolar tissue that is the cribriform fascia and also it is pierced by a number of structures making it sleeve-like. So it is called a sleeve-like so the name is given as a cribriform fascia. So what are all the structures that are passing through the saphenous opening? So structures passing. Passing through the saphenous opening are number one we have the great saphenous vein great saphenous vein number two we have the superficial epigastric as well as the superficial external pudendal vessels we have the superficial epigastric as well as the superficial external pudendal vessels they also pass through the uh, cribriform fascia that is the saphenous uh, opening then also we have the few lymph vessels as well as lymph nodes few lymph vessels and nodes also pass along the saphenous opening so this is about the uh, modifications of the deep fascia of the thigh into iliotibial tract and the saphenous opening and that was just an introduction to the deep fascia of the thigh so thank you guys thank you for watching please make sure to subscribe and hit the like button and also if you are new here make sure to subscribe and share it among your friends thank you so much